Hello everybody and welcome to Greg's Vintage Workshop where I'm working to restore history one piece at a time. You might say, why does Greg look like he is in an apron? Because I am in an apron. That's a hint for what we're doing tonight. So for part two of the GE 404 radio, I'm going to start tackling that cabinet. I'm waiting on some tubes that were bad for the actual chassis as well as I've ordered a couple of power resistors to drop the voltage down to it. It's a 105 to 120 and my voltage always runs considerably higher than that so I'm going to drop it down. So tonight we're going to take that old dull scratched up cabinet and we're going to try and get it all cleaned up and make it look like new again. It's got some brass on it that's all tarnished, the pointer is terrible on it, it's got a lot of wear and a lot of problems. So we're going to get it as best as we can get it. So without further ado, let's get started with that. After a complete cleaning upstairs in the sink, I got out my wet and dry 1000 grit sandpaper and proceeded to start to sand the cabinet. After a few strokes, I realized that the uh, dry was not going to hold up and cut it. Uh, it was bogging up the, the paper, so I went ahead and got a soapy water mix and sprayed on it and started sanding it that way. This was a, quite a tedious and long process and I've sped this thing up just so save you guys the, the pain. Uh, basically sanding, spraying, wiping it off, checking it, sanding, spraying, wiping it off, checking it multiple, multiple times. This uh, video basically was about 20 minutes and I cut it down to about a minute. There the cracks are showing still. So after getting it to a point that I felt I could get it shinier, I went with my electric polisher and some of my Blackfire uh, auto polishing compound. And uh, I was starting it on a, a lower speed and then I cranked it up to a little bit faster speed. I'd say it was probably running a medium speed on that. And I proceeded to uh, buff this thing as best as I thought I could buff it and then I would uh, wipe it off and add a little more compound and buff it some more and that's what I'm doing here is buffing through this thing. Once I got it to the point that I thought it was in pretty good shape I took a big terry cloth towel and uh, polished the compound off to take a look and see what we had and uh, I could still see the cracks in there which I knew I would but I wasn't sure how far it would be and uh, that's kind of where I'm showing right there the cracks are still there okay so here's the first pass at the uh, top of this radio there, as I showed you there's a crack there and there's a crack there and there's a crack there that's just a smear there that's just a smear I got some super glue on it because I super glued inside here. You can see that on top. Of the, I flexed, I put it on there, I flexed the crack to get it work it into the crack, and now it's in there. And I'll re hit the top a little bit in case any of it comes out through the flexing of the crack. Now, if you probably can't see in the camera there, but there's a little bit of a bubble there when I'm doing that, flexing the crack. I might add a little bit more on top of there, flex it a little bit more. And then, I didn't notice it before, but this back corner right here has got a chunky out of it, and it's cracked. So I'm going to have to, I just got through washing this a little bit, and there's water in there, so I'm going to take my heat gun and hit that and evaporate the water so I can put some uh, super glue in it. And then I'll get this clean good, and I'll put a former on this and see if I can't get some tinted epoxy in here to form that back. So I went ahead and ran super glue on the inside and the outside of these cracks and I've still got to put together some epoxy for this. I did run super glue on the inside and outside of that. I'm getting ready to take the back cover which I've cleaned up outside to shoot some clear coat on it to help preserve what little bit of this is that's left on it 
and uh, the actual antenna keep that in good shape. There were two very, very rusty clips at the top, actually right here at this part at the top. I've been soaking them in evaporust, so I'm going to go get those, clean them up, put them on here, and then just going to shoot it all with clear coat. Okay, so I clear coated this and it's all done. I think it turned out pretty good. Those two rusted pieces, I just clear coated them as well after I cleaned them up with water. So we'll set this aside until it's needed. So previously, if you guys have seen, uh, like on my little bitty Emerson CF233, they had a broken Bakelite case. I used epoxy mixed with some coffee grounds to get the coloring fairly close. Well, I've evolved a little since then. Now I've got liquid epoxy colorants as well as powder epoxy colorants. This is a powder one here. This is a sample of a liquid here. I've got a couple different samples here. This one's done with um, liquid. This one's done with powder. I don't think I can get close to the color, but I'm going to have to put something in it. So basically what we get would be what we get. But I've got these setting up right now. And then once they're finished setting up, we'll see how they uh, look and make a decision. So I had to feed an awful lot of super glue on the outside of this as well as the inside of this corner because this was broken all the way back to here in several places so now that it's had about 24 hours to dry I've been filing with the file to get it all flat because it was uneven this way and uh, so I'm about ready to say that this is good enough for now it's feeling pretty good all the way across here up and down this is the first file and with a file I'll go back with like 220 and then 600 and ultimately 1000 but I need to get this piece here epoxy so the next step is going to be to get the epoxy which I've been doing some color matching but not with a whole lot of success so I guess I'm just going to have to go with the best I can do is just a small corner in the back anyway this was the one I, I used the liquid epoxy with, I think, wait a second, no, this is the powdered epoxy, not a very close match. This one is the liquid epoxy, and it's got a little bit of red in it. I did the brown and the red together, I don't know if you can see that it's coming out. It's still, again, not a very close match, but I think ultimately it's going to be the best I can get. So I think that's the one I'm going to go with. I got to create a form out of some plastic, probably something like this. I will put some double sided tape to contain the epoxy and then I'll bend this around here like that. And then I've got to create a dam on this side to keep it from flowing out this way and then I'll fill it up. I'll do that off camera. I'll probably show you this before I do the epoxy in there. Okay, so I currently have some double sided tape on there. And the, the purpose for the double sided tape is to prevent seepage of the epoxy underneath here. Now, I didn't mash it down yet because when I mash it down, I want to conform this to it when I mash it down. And I don't want it to pull back up. So I'm going to trim this thing up to get it to the size I want it to be. And then I'll conform this thing around here and hopefully that will hold it in place and then I'll put some additional tape across the top of it to hold it in place. Okay so I got my little dam all made. I'm getting ready to mix up some epoxy and put it in there. I've got an end piece that I put in there with silicone to try and seal it so nothing can come past it. Hopefully I got that well enough that it won't come past it but we'll see. So I had remembered that I had purchased some Novus number two specifically for polishing plastic radios like this. And so here I am squirting some of it on there and I'm going to get the uh, power polisher back on there. I'm using my uh, fine disc on this, the foam disc as I show here, six inch finishing disc. And we're just going to on a higher speed here and as I'm 
going through here. Obviously, I've dubbed this tape and, and made it shorter than it actually was, but I'm polishing the side, the top, and we'll get this thing looking pretty good. And I'm going to pick it up here and I'll show you after I wipe it down a little bit, get some of the initial polish off. It looks pretty good. That Novus number 2 did a really nice job. Very happy with that. Okay, so here's the side with the repair. Right there is the repair. It's not the same color, even though I tried to get it halfway close. It's not very close, but I think it looks pretty good. I mean, from a distance, you certainly can't really tell it. It's better than having a chunk out, so I'm going to leave it at that. I've been gradually polishing all this, as you've seen. Turned out pretty good. You can still see the crack from the where it was broken on the top, but it's not cracked any longer. It's glued. It's just I can't, you know, get rid of it completely. Uh, where it can't be seen, and then here's the other side. Yeah, considering what it was, I'm pretty happy with it. I still got to clean the front, so anyhow. And as you can see from my workbench as I pan around here, it takes a lot of crap to try and polish out a case tools down there. Yeah, a lot of work involved with this. Okay, so now what I'm getting ready to do is cut a piece of grill cloth, which I've got a rough piece of grill cloth here. I think that this gold is going to look good in place of this one. It's not as porous as this one is, but I think sound comes through fine. But I think the gold is going to match the radio really well. But the cardboard piece here is like broken in half. So I'm going to remake this cardboard piece. And what I'm planning on using is the cardboard from the Splenda box because it's a nice hard cardboard. Nice thick and hard. So I think it'll work perfect. So I'm going to get that going. So here is the bezel uh, for the knobs. I'm pretty sure it's brass, not positive, but as you can see, it's pretty nasty. And uh, I got some others here, and I bought this at Harbor Freight for about $2.99 yesterday. So we're going to see if we can get these things buffed out. Okay, 
Alright guys, so I took all of the hardware for the radio and I soaked it in evaporust and got all the corrosion and rust off of it. And I put it in here and I sprayed it full of uh, T9 bow shield. I'm just going to let it sit in that for a day or two. I ordered a 39 ohm 10 watt resistor to drop my line voltage down to the radio. Um, I figured out why I have like 130 volts in this house. I was looking outside and the power pole that supplies my house, the main transformer is right on my pole and my the wires come straight to my house before it seems like it branches off someplace else. So I've got full transformer voltage right to my house. So since I usually run 130-ish on my uh, MFB, I think I'm going to put about a 39 ohm 10 watt resistor in here and it should drop 129 down to about 115 116 something like that put it more within the range of the radio but uh, yeah so that's why my voltage is so high I know I've had people say now there's no way your voltage is that high but it actually is so what I'm getting ready to do right now is I told you guys that this pointer was warped and you probably couldn't see before how warped it actually was but take a look there it's pretty warped so I'm going to try and take it out of here and heat it and flatten it and then paint it and stick it back in there that's going to be the plan anyway let me get my heat gun and see if we can get this thing out of here well let's see if we can get this thing out of here first should just pull out maybe kind of crimped in there Right, crimped, crimped and glued okay so it might not come out so let me just get my heat gun and see if I can heat that up and mash it flat let's see what we can do I'm going to try and put it on here and see if we can get Didn't want to burn my fingers, but I guess I gotta. Well, that's quite a bit straighter. Much straighter. It looks like it needs to be slid back in here, though. I don't know if somebody glued that in there like that. Or what. It's just pinched. It could just be pinched. I don't want to bust it. But, I'm going to take it off camera and see if somehow I can get that thing slid back in there some more without breaking it. Also, it's as you can see, it's not perfectly flat. I might try and sand that. I don't know, this could be something somebody made and stuck in there. It could be factory residual. I don't know. But, uh, let me play with this and I'll bring it back and show you what I wound up with. Alright, so here is the dial indicator. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. My daughter informed me that she thought it looked like a forklift fork, which, considering I've been in that industry for 45 years, she would know. But, uh, yeah, it turned out good. Uh, I actually, it broke when I was trying to take it out of there. It broke the part that was in the pinched edge, but I managed to get the pinched edge open. And then I sanded the, uh, the top of that thing flat where it was sticking up. And I put it in there, and we pinched it down. And then I painted it. Painted the black part too. I think it turned out good. So I think this will look good on the radio. Well, I think that this video is long enough that this is a good spot to uh, end it. So thanks for watching from Greg at Greg's Vintage Workshop.